This is part three of Bob Gaskin's Morals of Survival presentation at the uh, North Carolina State Fairgrounds that was videotaped on July 10th, 2016. In part three here, Bob continues his end of the world scenario and discusses the potential impacts of coastal flooding and grid down. He then further discusses the current geological, weather, and climate changes we're experiencing. He then turns back to the moral questions that we need to deal with, reinforcing why we need to change the way we think about preparing. So stick with it and watch part three. You can find proof of this in the Bible, in the book of Revelation, and in Acts, and in three of the four Gospels. Or were the Gospels from Ringo, Paul, I'm kidding. I can make fun of it, I'm a Christian, it's okay. It's okay, nobody stoned me. Anyway, you can find evidence of this in the Quran. You can find evidence of this in the Torah. You can find evidence of this in the I Ching. Basically, every culture, society, or religion that exists 3,500 years ago, they all talk about this. So it's not just Bob Schmuckatelli standing up here addressing you today. Okay? The problem is that when this happens, the West Coast... Does anybody have a bottle of water? A bottle of water? Can I borrow that bottle? No, just that, that one right there. Oh, let me have this one. Lid on site. My hands are clean. I use Steve's oil. Well, if you don't use essential oils, you need to. It's not just for hippies anymore. That's my new model. Essential oil is not just for hippies anymore. See, when you're spinning your bottle, guys, see how the, see how the water spins? It's, it's pretty neat, right? Right? Awesome. Do y'all know you can start a fire with a bottle of water? We'll get into that some other time. Anyhow, when the water's spinning the bottle and you stop it, look, spinning, you stop, what happens? Does it just immediately drop down or does it continue to go? Thank you very much. See, the problem is, guys, is that the oceans are in movement. Right? In order for the sun to change directions, what has to happen? First, it has to slow down. Then it has to stop. Then 28 Earth hours later, it has to start back up, tilt in a different direction, and move a different direction. How big of a tilt is it? 37.6 degrees. I haven't lost anybody yet. I'm loving this. Okay. I always hated science, and now here I am teaching it, right? But the problem, guys, is that when that happens, it'll take 37 minutes. 37 minutes for the waters of the ocean to move 300 to 450 miles inland along the west coast of all seven continents. 37 minutes. 37 minutes and 26 to 28 percent of the population of the United States will be dead. 37 minutes. West Coast. West Coast. So what is, yeah, the left coast, right? They wouldn't survive a society in any event anyway. None of them own guns. I love liberals. I really do. They taste just like chicken. <laughs> I'm kidding. I have that t-shirt, by the way. Anyway, <clears throat> the point of all of this is this, guys. When 11% of our power grid is automatically shut off, the way our grid is designed is, raise your hand for me, when her grid goes down, his grid and his grid come together to support her needs. It's a great little communist movement, right? When their grids go down, raise your hand for me, her grid, his grid, raise your hand for me, I'm going to pick on you. His grid, your grid, your grid, your grid, your grid, and everybody raise your hand for a point of action. All of these grids have to compensate to provide them with electricity. So when her grid goes down, instantly he kicks in, he kicks in, right? And we have what's called a rolling blackout that covers the entire nation that lasts anywhere from 9 to 11 minutes. Not a big deal. Most of us don't even notice it. But when two grids go down, right, now we've got this rolling blackout that's lasting an hour and a half to two hours. We'll see as long as we get his grid back up, I'm sorry, as long as we get her grid back up in about 14 to 18 days, everything's fine. When their grids go down, unless we get both of their grids up in about three days, the rest of the grid goes down. 
Now, when he drops out because of the overload, and then she drops out because her arm got tired and it's overloaded, and they drop out, the rest of the grid crumbles. Go ahead and drop your hands. In about 18 minutes, 11% of our grid down, 18 minutes. The entire nation down. Y'all with me so far? This means that 18 minutes after a tidal wave connects with the west coast, or the left coast as I prefer to refer to them, the entire grid is gone. Your cell phones will not work. Why? Because your cell phone towers are connected to the power grid. But the data transfer version of the towers is connected to a 48-hour battery backup. So while you can't talk on your cell phone, you can send text messages. You got me? Okay. So, the problem is, so the sun's going to stop for 26 hours. In order for the sun to stop for 26 hours, as it's slowing almost to a stop and then starting back up, the earth has already stopped. The earth will be stopped for 78 hours. How many days is that? 72 divided by 3 carried the 1. Three days. Three days, six hours. See, she was so involved in the science I was teaching, she forgot her math for a second. I love you, girl. It's Debbie, right? There we go. I don't remember anybody's names. And I remember hers. So I can pick on her. That's what's allowed. Anyway, the point is, guys, is you're just going to stop for 78 hours. 37 minutes after it stops, the left coast of the United States is going to receive a wave that's 300 to 450 miles inland. Y'all with me? But we're not the only ones. See, smaller countries that aren't 300 miles wide, like Panama, Republic of, and Mexico, and Florida, well, I know they're not a country, but still, they want to be. They act like it. They're almost as bad as us Texas. At least ours is justified, right? Anyway, so all this water rushes through, all of these people die. This happens when the earth comes to a stop. And what happens when the earth comes to a stop? You ever been in your car and you're doing 90 miles an hour and there's an accident up ahead and your brakes are a little bit wet and you slam on the brakes? Do you just come to a nice, peaceful stop? No, what happens? You're sliding, you're jerking, you're bouncing, you're shaking, and that's exactly what's going to happen here on the earth. We're going to have a magnitude 4.0 to 6.0. I'm personally guessing 5.0 because I love the law of averages. And really, who's going to tell me I'm wrong after it happens? Bob, it was really 7.2. How do you know? Anyway, the entire globe is going to experience this earthquake. Every square inch will feel this. So when you're on the right coast, or the east coast, however you want to refer to it, and you're driving home from work at 9 o'clock at night, and the sun has already gone down, and the whole earth shakes for about, I don't know, 30-something minutes while people are dying on the left coast, and you see all the lights go off 18 minutes into it, and then you, you listen to your radio in your car and you hear this This is a message from the emergency broadcast network. This is not a message, right? And then all of a sudden it stops. Everybody else is going to be going, what, what happened? You're going to know. So you make it home because there's no reason your car won't work, right? You drive around all the obstacles and the idiots and you ran into each other, right? You make it home. And you go to bed, and you get up the next morning, and you realize you overslept because you didn't have the electricity, so your alarm didn't go off, and your phone didn't charge because there's nothing to charge it on, and that better than the alarm didn't go off. And you wake up at 9 o'clock in the morning, and it's still dark outside. You'll know in that moment, at that time, you have less than 72 hours. You get 300 to 450 miles away from the coast. If you live on the coast and you actually make it home that evening, right, and you go outside and as far as you can see is rock and sand and dead sea creatures because there's no water, you'll pretty much know right then, right? You won't need confirmation that the sun's not going to rise the next morning. Because, see guys, in every religion, every culture, every society that existed 3,500 years ago, they all tell us the same thing. It's happened already, and it's going to happen again. I don't care if you 
believe in the almighty direction of our Lord God or if you believe that aliens come down and change the DNA every so many thousands of years. I don't give a crap what you believe. History tells me. Science tells me. Archaeology tells me. Sociology tells me. And mathematics confirm it. But once every 3,647 years, this happens. And it's a three to five year devastating cycle that begins the moment that the, the, the cycle expires, which was what? September 22nd, 2013. Who here hasn't sat back at any point in time the last three years and gone, why is it colder in Missouri in February than it is in Alaska the last three years? Why is Dallas, Texas getting more snow than Chicago, Illinois for the last three years? Why are we seeing cloud formations that have never existed in recorded history? Why did we have more me mega quakes, which is a 6.1 or higher, in 2015 than we had in the previous century? See, that includes the fact that in 2014 we had more mega quakes than we had, had in the previous century. And in 2013 we had more mega quakes than we had in the previous century. Even at that, in 2015, we still had more megaquakes than we did from January 1st, 1916, uh, till, I'm sorry, 1915, until December 31st, 2014. Y'all with me? That's why Nashville, Tennessee today is going through its third 500-year flood in nine years. That's how we were able to accurately predict 11 months, three weeks before Hurricane Sandy hit the, the coast of uh, New York that they were going to have their 500-year hurricane two years in a row. Only happens every 500 years. How many times have you turned on the news in the last year and heard, oh, the 800-year flood, the 400-year the earthquake, the 900-year storm, the 850-year volcano that all erupted in the last 20 years is all happening again? How many times do you have to hear that before you wake up one morning and you go, hmm, something crazy is going on. Now, here's the problem that each and every one of you face. Y'all ready for this? You're not, you don't have it within you. You do not have the intestinal fortitude to look your neighbors, your friends, your co-workers, your family members in the eyes and tell them, go away, I don't have enough for you. You don't have it in you. And if you do have it in you, in that moment of most desperate need for these people, if you do have it within you to turn away from them, you don't freaking deserve to live in my future society. Ladies, here's a hard one. I don't believe in divorce. I've fought divorce. I've been married 26 years to the best woman ever walked the face of this earth. She put up with the worst husband for the first seven, and an okay husband for the next eight, and then a great man for the last 11. Oh, she'll confirm she's the best woman there is. <laughs> the point is, <clears throat> we never got divorced through the bad years because she was too stubborn, and I hate divorce. I don't subscribe to divorce. Let me, let me tell you something, ladies. If you are married to a man that will turn away a woman and her three small children and let them starve or get raped or murdered because he's too selfish to give them a cracker and some peanut butter. That's a man you need to leave. If he has that much of a disregard for life, he has that much of a disregard for you. I pity the fool that will abuse a woman the entire time they're together and put a gun in her hand and say, cover my backside when the police are staying at home that day. I might turn this into some preaching and start jumping because I ain't going to cost it. The problem we face, guys, is you do not have it in you to turn those people away. And when people get up the morning after the event and the sun has not risen, and the electricity doesn't come on. And the water's not flowing through their pipes. And their phones are not working. Who do you think they're going to turn to? Crazy Bob down the street? He's been telling me for decades this crap's going to happen. That fool was right. And the wife's going to be going, maybe we should have done what he said instead of buying that TV. Either way, they're coming to your house. And you don't have it in you to turn them away. You don't. 
stop thinking a bullet's cheaper than a meal because it's going to be the bullet that kills you that's cheaper than the meal that you should have given to somebody else. You don't have it in you guys. Where's my combat vest? Raise your hands. Ask any one of these people. They will flat out tell you. They may not tell you what they went through when they had to do what they had to do, but by God, they'll flat out tell you it takes a mental and emotional and physical toll on you when you pull that trigger. And it is something you do not want to do. Not when you can avoid it. It takes 18 years and 9 months from conception to manhood. I can cook a lot of food in that time. I can grow a lot of food in that time. How is food cheaper than a bullet? I'm sorry, how is a bullet cheaper than food? Because you see guys, when these people show up at your house, you're already going to have enough to worry about, aren't you? Because you're going to realize in that moment, I got a long ass haul ahead of me. I got to get everything I own into my vehicle and get 500 miles from the coast. If you don't believe me, DHS built their largest warehouse in the United States as of 2009 in Winchester, Kentucky. It's three stories above ground. It was 72 stories below ground. And you know what they found at the archaeological level of 36 to 3,700 years and 72 to 7,400 years and 10,000 X amount of years? Because I'm not going to do the math real quick. Do you know what they found in each layer? Disturbed soil. Not just sea creatures, but plant life. Don't tell me why it's from the Great Flood. The Great Flood was 5,457 years ago. I'm sorry, 5,456 years ago. I know this. I've studied it. Don't get into a religious debate with me. You will lose. Don't get into a history debate with me. You will lose. Let's keep it real. Let's just stay friends. I like each and every one of you. Why did they find that in Winchester, Kentucky? It's a mighty powerful way. Take a swimming pool, empty the swimming pool of all water, and put 17 bathtubs in it. And each one of those bathtubs represents a mountain and a valley, and a mountain and a valley. And when you start filling the first one, you will realize that before the last one gets full, the water is already up to the sides of the last one. What's that tell me? Virginia? All those mountain ranges in West Virginia, all those valleys, and then more mountains, and then more valleys, and then more mountains, they're all covered in what? Water. Why? Because 78 hours after the Earth stops, what's it do again? Starts back up. We have different star charts in the night sky. It's going to be an awesome event if you survive it. It'll be a horrible event if your friends and loved ones and family and co-workers don't survive it. 